Hello and welcome. Today we will discuss the intensive care management of renal transplant patients. Sepsis remains the main reason for ICU admission. Acute bacterial graft pyelonephritis is the most frequent type of sepsis and should be considered in every patient. Urinary catheters and ureteral stents are common risk factors and their removal or replacement needs to be discussed to avoid recurrence. Renal imaging is recommended to rule out urinary tract obstruction, renal abscess, or urine leakage. Bacterial pneumonia is the second most common source of sepsis. Cytomegalovirus can cause life-threatening organ dysfunction and CMV viremia should always be excluded. Rates of severe CMV disease have decreased owing to post-transplant prophylaxis and preemptive treatment strategies. Several other respiratory viruses, influenza respiratory syncytial virus, or adenovirus, may, however, cause severe viral pneumonia. Pneumocystis pneumonia is the most common fungal infection in patients without prophylaxis and after prophylaxis discontinuation. High-dose co-trimoxazole remains the cornerstone of treatment. Other fungal infections, such as invasive pulmonary aspergillosis, are uncommon in the late post-transplant period but carry a grim prognosis. In the early post-transplant period, mycotic aneurysm of the vascular anastomosis is a very rare but potentially life-threatening complication, mostly caused by candida or aspergillus. Challenges in managing anti-rejection drugs during critical illness. This takes into account the time from transplantation, longer delay being associated with lower risk of acute rejection, baseline graft function, immunological risks, and reason for ICU admission. Discontinuation is considered in patients with drug toxicity, like neutropenia, sirolimus-associated pneumonitis, posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome, and thrombotic microangiopathy. In extreme situations, steroids can be used as sole anti-rejection agent. During sepsis, decreasing doses, stopping drugs which might induce neutropenia. Careful attention should be paid to numerous drug interactions, which is including azole antifungals and macrolide antibiotics, and therapeutic drug monitoring is usually required in ICU patients. Post-transplant. Vascular access may be challenging because of previous vein thromboses and collateralization whilst at the same time vascular access should be preserved, especially in patients at risk of transplant failure. This includes the avoidance of subclavian lines if possible and the preservation of existing arteriovenous fistulas. Femoral venous access on the side of the graft should be avoided whenever possible. Always beware of residual long-term complications of chronic kidney disease. This may affect your patient's physiology in ICU. Transplant recipients are susceptible to all causes of acute kidney injury but the differential diagnosis is wider and includes acute rejection, surgical and urological complications, side effects from immunosuppressive agents, and opportunistic infections. Depending on the time course after the transplant, different etiologies are more common than others shown in the figure here. Drug toxicity is particularly common, either due to inappropriate dosing or drug interactions with calcineurin inhibitors resulting in both high and low serum levels. Recurrence of the underlying primary renal disease may also have to be considered. Finally, consider the complications of immunosuppression. A high degree of suspicion should be kept toward common and uncommon complications of anti-rejection drugs. Adrenal insufficiency resulting from steroids, calcineurin inhibitor-induced TMA and press, sirolimus-associated pneumonitis, serum sickness or infusion reaction resulting from antithymoglobulin or monoclonal antibodies, or neutropenia associated with purine metabolism inhibitors are usual complications if not common ones. Hope you found it helpful. Thank you.